Howdy folks, I hope you're doing well. Greetings from the Nevada desert. I've been out here shooting for the past three days with Steph, who thought she needed to surprise you all with her presence. How are you, Steph? I'm good, I'm good. That's excellent. <laughs> now, in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about extension tubes versus true macro lenses. Basically, give you some definitions on both of those. For those who just want the how it works, we'll put all of that up front. For those who wanna know more about the maths and how you can get to true macro or beyond true macro, we'll have a full talk in studio towards the end. So, quick primer. A uh, true macro lens will let you reproduce reality, so its reproduction ratio is what we talk about, is one. That means if something is one inch in reality, whether it's a, a quarter, a coin, or a bug, or a, what, a matchstick, if it's one inch in reality, it will be replicated one inch on your sensor, which then means, of course, when you get the final image, it looks just immense. Hey folks, this is your last chance to pick up a huge collection of photography education materials at 95% off, whilst helping raise money for some great charities. The five day deal ends on October the 11th and it includes F-stoppers photographing the world, as well as landscapes with Nigel Danson, real estate photography with Charlie Simon, Northern Lights with Christian Holberg, and my natural and available light masterclass is included in the pro bundle. Every course in the bundle is brand new this year. They never repeat courses. So even if you got the five day deal in the past, all these courses will be new for you. And if you purchase using my link, I'll be sending out an additional free bonus as thanks of an artistic tape boudoir shoot that I shot with Steph. In that course, you join Steph and I for a full start to finish boudoir course where we conceptualize the shots, cut up all of the tape, do the craft and stuff, applying it to her body, and then the full photography process. And of course, if you've already purchased that or the natural light course, just let me know and I'll be happy to switch it out for you for another course. The last thing we wanna do is exclude existing customers. Don't miss out, it ends on October 11th and then it's gone for good. Most lenses aren't able to do that. A macro lens, because people are shooting up close, they generally optimize, so the lens is performing really well at or close to its closest focus, and they generally give you a much higher F number option, like F22, 32, even 64, because your depth of field when you're so close is tiny. Whereas this is Nikon's other 50 mm lens, this is the 51.8 versus their 2.8 macro, this guy doesn't have a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio, it's a 0.15, so 15% of reality. But this gives you an f1.8 aperture and it will have been optimized for focusing further away. So if you're focusing really close, you may find you get more aberrations with this than you would with the macro lens. However, extension tubes are what makes this whole thing interesting. Now, have you ever shot with extension tubes? No, I have not. Okay. So it's, kind of, it's great that we're near Vegas. It's um, just like a magic trick. There's nothing in the middle. One of those saw the lady in half. You can separate them just like that. There's no optics in them. Uh, whether they're smart or dumb ones, it's just to give you extra distance between the rear of your lens and the camera sensor. It's just pushing the lens further away and physics will tell you then that makes your lens focus closer. You'll lose the ability to infinity focus, but you'll get the ability to focus much, much closer. So these kit that I wanted to test out are from Velo. They have a 20 and a 12 mil option for Nikon Z, but they actually make them for every mount and some of the sets have three in there, some have two. We can put this on the back of the 51.8. Wait, you worried I'm gonna drop something? Yes. I would never drop something. Shh, I'm gonna drop something else in a second. <laughs> and then we can connect that to our camera. And because these have terminals on each side, it's still going to have autofocus, auto exposure, and stabilization from the camera. Now, I have done the maths already. I can tell you with both of these on, I can't get to true macro with this lens but for instead of being 0.1 reproduction, I can get 0.79, so much, much closer. So for now, I'm going to find a bug or a flower or Steph's ear or something to take a close up on and show you the true macro versus the standard 50 
and then add in the two extension tubes, show you the difference in results that we're getting. And then we're gonna go in studio and I'll talk you through the full mass of how you can figure out how to get two true macro. And I might even grab my 24 to 70 because I think that in combination with these will get me beyond true macro and I may end up having my closest focus somewhere inside the lens, which is a fun situation to find yourself in. So let's find a giant bug. Oh my God, no. So I found a tiny little flower here. We had to drive 45 minutes to find this specific flower. We couldn't have done this in our hotel. Um, and let me just show you. So I'm gonna go up to like F11, but I'm so close, I'm gonna have a tiny depth of field here. And I need to stay nice and low so I'm not getting my shadow in. Now there's two ways you can do it autofocus, but it can get confused. So sometimes going to manual, going to closest, you see this lens extends way out when I do that. And then I just move in and by eye, see when I'm getting, so here I'm getting the closest stamen. Let me just get a few options here. Here at F5.6. F11, and 32. I recently had a little argument in the comments with someone who wouldn't accept this, but it's just a fact. Often spec sheets for macro lenses will tell you an aperture range, like this one says 2.8 to F22. That's not at macro. That's when you're just typically shooting. When you're at one to one, it's actually an F5.6 to an F32, but it's not in the specifications. So just keep that in mind, because even at F32, you'll find that you still have a tiny depth of field. So if you're shooting at something on an angle, shooting top down at a flower, you might still only be getting the top of the little seed pods, but not getting the full you know, flower petals in there. But you can see on this guy, at one to one, I can really nicely fill up the frame. So here at, on the macro lens, that flower must be about 24 mil because the sensor is 36 by 24. We're pretty much filling it up. Let's now switch to the 51.8. The 1.8 and the 1.2 have the same reproduction ratio anyway, but it's a bit easier to manage. Um, and see what it can do without adding any adapters. Huh. So before I was like right in here and struggling not to cast shadows, the closest I can focus on this guy is here. Wow, so a huge difference. But it does give me the option of going to 1.8 so I can blur that background out plenty. Or at F11. Or this guy only goes to F16. Okay, so not a huge kind of reproduction, right? So let's show the difference if I pop the 12 mil on. Remember this has 12 and 20 so I can use 12, 20, or I can put them both and get to 32. So it's as simple as you can either connect the adapter straight to the back of the lens, or you can put the adapter onto your body and then attach the lens. So it all just works the same. I have the same aperture range, but now I'm gonna be able to focus much closer. Let's see how much closer. So before, what was my shot? It was about this. Now I can't focus that close because I'm too far away. Now, as I come in, I mean, that's a huge difference. Now I can focus this close. Again at F1.8. Eleven and sixteen. Now let's switch the twelve for the twenty. It's nice to have cameras that have sensor shields. 
If you guys are in the Nikon Z system, as I said, this comes in Nikon Z, but a bunch of other mounts, you can check out my Nikon Expert Setup Guide. Takes you through this, the Z8, as well as the Z9, Z7, Z6, ZF, and all of the APS-C range, showing you all of the different controls on the camera, every menu option, and how to set them up for your use. I also have guides for Sony, Fuji GFX, and Hasselblad. Now, the 20 mil extension, let's see how close that gets us. So, much closer again. We just take the same apertures. So you can see there's a big difference when I'm getting in close. Here I still have a f1.8 aperture as opposed to the minimum aperture on the macro lens up close was 5.6. Now let's put them both in and see how close it gets me. So I'll pop the adapter on the back here. And on she goes. So it makes it a much longer lens, but it makes it something like the size of like a 105 macro. All right. Oh, and there's a bug coming into it. Perfect. Nice timing, buddy. You're kidding me. I just filled up my card. <laughs> and now it's just starting to get good. Did I bring the cards? I bet I didn't. Ah. There's a card in here. And he probably won't come back again. Let me see. Oh, he's on that one now. Let's see if I can get in there. Yep, he's scared off. Okay, so that was fun to get a little bug. So now, now let's just do the flower and see how close I can get now. So you can see we're getting much, much closer. But still not as close as we were using the true macro lens. Oh, he's come back again. I should switch and get a little video heat. This is actually perfect because it answers the question of why would you want extension tubes? If I were just using my 50 mil, my shot would be way back out here. Well, let me show you. So that slow-mo you just saw was using both extension tubes. If I'm trying to film the bird on that flower with my normal lens, the closest I'm getting is this kind of a shot. So this is the closest I can get on my 50 mil lens if I'm not using extension tubes. So you can see it really makes a difference in the kind of stories you're able to tell. The last one I wanted to show you is the 24 to 70 F4 Nikon, which has a surprisingly good reproduction ratio. So here at 70, you can see the kind of results I'm getting there. And on this guy, if I pop on both of the extension tubes, we're gonna get nice and close. I'm really casting shadows now. Let me go to manual. So I have to get super low so I'm not casting a shadow. Okay, so we're incredibly close. And I wonder how it is at 24. Yeah, at 24, my closest focus is inside the lens. I just can't get a shot at all. Let's get out of the sand and wrap this up. 
I have prickles in my bottom and a cramp in my thigh. So that's a pretty simple demonstration of the value of extension tubes. Perfect that the bug came in right at the time so I could show you how it looked in video as well. It makes any lens potentially a macro or close to macro. As I said, I only got the 0.79 on the 50. Let's now go back in studio out of this blistering heat where I can talk you through a little bit more of the specifics and the formula of how you can figure out how close these guys will let you get with your given setup. Isn't Steph the best, not only a beautiful model, but also a great camera person. She helped me with filming most of that. So I just wanted to talk you through some of the mass on this. Now, if you're really interested in macro, I actually have a guide to macro that goes through a bunch of different lenses and different techniques and that kind of thing. I'll have details to that below. And of course, below also the five day deal. Don't miss out, it's just about to end. It's an incredible deal. You can get up to like $3,000 worth of courses, 95% off. The Pro Bundle includes our natural and available light masterclass, which already more than pays for the entire bundle. In fact, pretty much any of the courses, you're getting your money's worth, but you get literally dozens of them for the one low price. And if you make sure that ours is the last link that you use before buying any of the bundles, I'll send you out a free extra bonus, which is Steph and my artistic boudoir tape photo shoot tutorial. Don't miss out folks, great win, win, win. Raise money for charity and get an incredible deal. Now, these extension tubes. It's actually fairly easy, but you're gonna have to do a tiny bit of maths here. Now, essentially how much magnification you get depends on how much of an extension you put on. It sounds confusing at first, but essentially, and as I mentioned before, the further you push your lens away from the camera body, the closer it's able to focus. And the easy way to remember it is, things look bigger when they're closer. That makes sense, right? That's really easy to get your head around. So to figure out how much, of a, how much closer you're going to get with an extension tube, you need to know what your current lens's focal length is, what its maximum reproduction ratio is, and then what your extension tube lengths are in millimeters. And that's all you really need. So to keep it easy, we'll just talk 50 and 100 millimeter lenses because they are the easiest for the mathematics. So let's say you have a 100 mil lens and it has a 0.3 magnification ratio just out of the box, okay? Essentially what you need to do is divide the extension tube length by the lens's focal length. So to keep it really easy, let's say we have 50 mil in extension tubes and it's a 100 mil lens. So you divide 50 by 100 and you get 0.5. That 0.5 you add to the magnification ratio. So we started out at a 0.3. If we added 50 mil of extension tubes, we'll get a 0.8 reproduction ratio. That computing for everyone? Now thinking about the 50 mil lens that I was shooting with there. That had out of the box a 0.15 reproduction ratio, right? And then I had 32 millimeters of extension tubes. So 32 divided by 50 is 0.64. So if we add 0.64 to the 0.15, we get a total reproduction ratio of 0.79. Makes sense, right? Well, here's a fun one. What if you had, say, a 35 mil lens that had a reproduction ratio that's quite low of, say, 0.1? Okay, if I put 32 mil of extension tubes on there, 32 divided by 35 is 0.91. So I will actually go past a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio. There's plenty of lenses that you can get beyond macro. In fact, there are lenses on the market that are up to two and even five times macro. They just are built so that the focus point is still outside of the lens. You might find on a traditional lens that's not built as a macro, that once you add a lot of tubes, it actually wants to focus inside the lens, so it's actually not usable. So it's gonna take a little bit of experimentation. Let me know if you have any questions. Big thanks to Steph and also Juan who helped on this video. Thanks to B&H Photo, and you can find these Velo extension tubes in the description below. They work great.